For this video, I will be reviewing a tablet from Viet. It is their A15 model, and frankly is very budget and beginner friendly because of its price. This particular model is slightly less than 70 US dollars. Okay, on to what's inside the box. Things included when I opened it were a graphic tablet, the pen, a USB cable, 20 replacement nibs, a nib remover, a pin pocket, um, an artist glove, a guide, and driver instructions. The tablet has a 10 by 6 inch drawing area. The pen is battery free. The tablet has 12 customizable shortcut keys. Buttons on the pen for additional customization. And the pen has 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity. Same as Wacom and other big brands. So first, I followed the instructions, which is really the same as any tablet, and uninstalled my old tablet drivers. Mine required me to restart the computer after doing that, so I did. This is a really important step to take. If you don't uninstall your old drivers, the new tablet will not work. Then I went over to VX website and found Download, Driver, then the Windows option, since that's what I'm using, and downloaded, then installed the driver. For me, this was a pretty quick process, but it could take a while. On the same page as the driver, you can install the instruction manual if you need it. After installing a driver, you can open the pin tablet settings and change things like monitor or drawing area mapping, pin sensitivity settings, left or right hand mode, and the functions for the shortcut keys on the tablet and on the pin. I changed the mapping option for mine because I use two monitors and like to keep the drawing area mapped to the left one, where I have whatever art program I'm using opened. That way the tablet is mapped proportionately to the monitor screen and feels more natural to draw on than if it was stretched across both of my monitors. I will be using Clip Studio Paint with the tablet, but it is advertised to work with pretty much any art program like Paint Tool Sci, Photoshop, Krita, and more. So when I first tried drawing with the tablet in Clip Studio Paint, the pin pressure did not work for me. It did after I opened the tablet settings window back up and clicked on Windows Ink function. This may not happen to you, but if it does, make sure to try turning on that setting, then go to the settings for Windows Ink on your computer and turn on Show Mouse Cursor. Otherwise, the tablet reacts to the pin pressure, but you can't see where your pin is hovering. I messed around with the pressure sensitivity in the tablet window until I liked how the pin felt. This is different for everyone depending on how hard or light you press down with a pin. Just find something that feels comfortable. If you're new to graphic tablets, this may take some experimenting. So, to me, the tablet feels nice, very smooth and thin. It has a very slight texture on the surface, almost like paper. I liked that. It does bend a little when pressed hard enough in the center because it is so thin. But I don't think that is an issue since I doubt you'd ever need to press the that hard when using it. I like drawing with my tablet inclined so it's easier on my wrist and carpal tunnel. So, I put something under the back to raise it a little. I recommend using a tablet stand or something for this model if you have the same issues as me or just like to draw like that. But overall, my first impression of the tablet is that it is small, thin, and sleek. If you wanted to travel with it, that would be very easy to do since it doesn't take up a lot of space. I like having the shortcut keys on the tablet and the pen. My one criticism for them though is that there are 12 keys on the tablet and they all look and feel the same. I wouldn't be able to tell them apart from touch or memory because I wouldn't be looking down to use them but instead of my monitor since it is a graphic tablet and not a pen display. So for me, I just use the bottom most keys for things like undo, redo, and zoom in and out and to flip the canvas. To be fair, for me, 12 keys is a little excessive but maybe that isn't the case for other artists. 
You could always put some stickers or tape on next to the buttons to remind you what you have them set to. For the pen, I use the buttons on its side for switching between eraser and brush and as an eyedropper for quickly picking out colors. Again, these are things you can customize in the tablet settings window. The pen is lightweight and batteryless. It doesn't need batteries, nor does it ever need to be charged. This is personally the first tablet I've used like that, so that was a really cool feature to me. Before this tablet, I used an older model by another company I bought several years ago. At the time, it was a good buy, but the battery in the pen dying often was definitely a hassle. Plus, that tablet didn't have any shortcut buttons on it. So, if you're looking for a new graphic tablet or you are just getting started in digital art, I recommend this one. Cheaper than some other brands while still having a lot of the same features. Small and easy to travel, no batteries needed, and easy to install, set up, and use. In my opinion, its price combined with its features makes this tablet both beginner friendly and also a good pick for more experienced artists. Okay, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching!